Hello and welcome to another Standard Games video. Today we're taking a look at a very budget-friendly but still powerful Mono Blue Artifact slash Ninja deck that uses some of the new additions from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan to power it up. And one of those is Zoetic Glyph, a 3-mana enchantment aura at Uncommon that enchants an artifact, turning it into a 5-4 artifact creature that's a golem in addition to its other types. And when the Zoetic Glyph is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, we discover 3. So even if the opponent manages to answer our now 5-4 creature, it will still be replaced, potentially even by another Zoetic Glyph if we get lucky. And there's no shortage of artifacts in this deck to enchant, all the way from artifact creatures, like the Disruptor and Ginger Brute at 1 mana, to some of our vehicles. We've got 4 copies of the High Speed Hover Bike, which when enchanted by the Glyph turns into a 5-4 flying creature that doesn't even need to be crewed for it to attack and block, so that's also great. And then we even have some artifact tokens that we can enchant with the Zoetic Glyph, such as the map token from Spyglass Siren and the treasure tokens that we can generate with Prosper's Thief. So there's plenty of synergy to go around. And then even if the opponent manages to, let's say, exile our creature with maybe a Brutal Cathar, the Zoetic Glyph itself still ends up in the graveyard, so Discover 3 still triggers, so there's not too many ways for the opponent to prevent that from happening unless they exile the Glyph itself, pretty much. So Glyph is awesome, and it kind of feels like you're getting a 5-4 with haste most of the time since you'll already have that artifact on the battlefield so it can immediately attack and then very quickly turn the corner especially when paired with our evasive creatures such as ginger brute which can get pseudo unblockable if we activate it and then we also have the network disruptor and hover bank which fly that we can also enchant with a zoetic glyph and then we've got two copies of Unctus's Retrofitter, which is kind of like a worse version of the Zoetic Glyph. We get a 2-3 creature that can turn one of our artifacts into a 4-4 for as long as the Retrofitter stays on the battlefield. So this one doesn't let us discover 3 when answered, and if the opponent takes out Retrofitter we lose our large artifact, but it's still an extra way to give us that sort of effect so we can start applying a bit more pressure, since the creatures in this deck tend to be kind of small otherwise. And then we've got kind of a ninja package in this deck. Starting, of course, we want to have some cheap evasive creatures, ideally, to set up ninjutsu. So we've got 12 of those with a network disruptor, 1-1 one, one artifact creature that flies, that gets to tap a permanent when it enters a battlefield. Can also maybe clear a path for some of our other ninjas to keep connecting. And then we've got the Spyglass Siren, which is also great to pick back up with Ninjutsu, so we can make another map token. And then Ginger Brute, which can immediately attack thanks to Haste, and as we've said, has the ability to become pseudo-unblockable, can only be blocked by creatures with Haste, and then can also be sacrificed sometimes to gain 3 life, which can be useful against aggro, especially after it maybe chum blocks one of the opponent's attacking creatures. And then at 2 mana, there's the Moon Circuit Hacker, which we can Ninjutsu for just a single blue mana. So after playing one of our 1-drops on turn 2, we can attack. Hopefully the opponent doesn't have a blocker, and we get to put the Hacker into play, tapped and attacking. And that's great, because the Hacker is now very likely to hit the opponent and draw us an extra card. And then in future turns, if it hits the opponent, it still lets us draw a card and then discard. So it still gives us a bit of card selection, even if it doesn't net us an extra card overall. And then we've got plenty of ways to clear a path for the hacker between the Disruptor. At one mana we also have Fading Hope as a bounce spell, which lets us maybe scry one. And then, as we mentioned, the Hover Bike, when it enters the battlefield, can also tap up to one at target creature. So this can also be a nice tempo play where we tap down a large attacker or get a blocker out of the way so we can keep connecting. And then another creature we can ninjutsu on turn 2 is Prosper's Thief, which is basically a 2-drop in this deck since we have so many 1-mana enablers for it. And then we get to put this in play, and then if a ninja or rogue damages the opponent, we get to create a treasure token. So Prosper's Thief is a ninja, we've got the hacker, and then Disruptor, also a rogue. So this can also maybe net us a treasure token if it connects, even without having used the ninjutsu on Thief, just by playing it before attacking, we can maybe get an extra treasure token. And then there's plenty of uses for the treasure tokens besides just making mana, such as maybe tapping it with a disruption protocol to use it as a 2 mana counter spell. Also very nice follow up to a turn 1 spyglass siren for instance, as we get to immediately counter the opponent's 2 drop if necessary, and then in the late game it's not going to be too difficult to cast this for 2 mana as opposed to 3 by just tapping an untapped artifact. 
And then we also have a one-off Eater of Virtue, another one-man artifact that we can maybe tap on turn two to cast our protocol. And then Eater of Virtue can equip our creatures to give them two extra power. And if a creature gets removed, we get to exile it. And then grant those keywords to future creatures. So very synergistic with Ginger Brute, giving future creatures haste. And also works quite well with the Flying on Spyglass Siren and Network Disruptor. And then last but not least, we've got a Kalpa Call, which can generate quite a bit of card advantage in this deck. If an artifact entered the battlefield under our control this turn, we get to look at the top two cards and then select one of them to put in hand. The other one goes into our graveyard. So we can enable this by casting our various artifacts, making tokens such as with Disruptor and Thief. And we can even enable it during the opponent's turn. That way we maybe get to trigger it twice in one turn cycle if we flash in the high-speed hover bike. So that also has a great synergy with a Call. And then a mana base, just 17 islands, a soaring city for additional interaction, and two copies of Mishra's Foundry, a nice creature land that can also keep up the pressure, can be very useful against control decks, especially as a way to still apply pressure after a sweeper. But that's also where the vehicle comes in handy, the Discover 3 from Zoetic Glyph can get us back on the board, and if we follow it up with a Glyph or a Retrofitter, we can immediately animate one of our artifacts and get in for 4 or 5 damage. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play and we've got what looks like a keepable hand. Siren sets up Hacker nicely or we could turn to Protocol by tapping the map and then Glyph could also be a way of animating the map token. Initiate could eventually destroy artifacts and enchantments too. I think I'm liking the uh, Hacker here. Although I guess the main concern is a Thalia, which would make our Glyph cost 4 mana. So maybe that's still reason enough to just uh, hit for 1 and pass with protocol available. And hope that they play an impactful 2-drop as opposed to double 1-drop here. Alright, that worked out. And now we get to play the Glyph on Curve. And then we'll have a decent turn lined up here. With another Siren, Hacker, pick up Siren and replay them. Adlin's not bad. It's gonna apply quite a bit of pressure as well. And then the 1-1s can eventually chum block our map. For now, do we attack with our 5-4? I think we still do, but it's close. Getting that 5 damage in versus having a blocker back for Adlin. Opponent could easily have a Brutal Cathar in hand to exile this. At least we'll still discover since the Glyph ends up in the graveyard. But uh, we'll see how this works out. And then Ninjutsu the Hacker. Opponent's at 6. And the Retrofitter's not bad. So let's just go with double siren and then we could also explore here with a map. Maybe make a 2-2 siren to block a 1-1. One -one. Disruptor is also not the worst, getting a blocker out of the way. When our opponent's at 6, assume they do have Cathar for the map token, then we would hit the Disruptor. Which would then maybe tap down Adlin. Certainly have more exciting cards we could hit. But uh, I'll keep it on top. Since it is something we can at least double spell alongside a retrofitter. It's going to be a veteran for now. And a Thalia, that's fine. So Adlin gets to attack, but we get to eat the 1-1. One -one. Okay, so let's say Disruptor taps down maybe Thalia or Adlin. We have not quite enough in the air. So it could also play Disruptor and then Retrofitter turning Disruptor into a 4-4 flyer. So we have a bit more pressure in the air. Don't hate that idea. And then I should maybe start by exploring. And we can do it onto another Siren to maybe diversify a little bit. Find a land. So Disruptor could tap down Adlin in case they have another one. So the map token gets to attack, probably just gets chumped. 
which is not all that productive. So I don't think this really matters. But I would like to target the Disruptor here. And then the Flyers can attack and we'll hang back with the rest. Alright, let's see if they have removal. Another Veteran can gain them more life to maybe survive. I will trade for Adlin, given the chance, although our opponent could still technically have a one-mana Iganjo with the two Legends in play. But, uh, gotta try. Don't think I want to double block with anything else. Trade happens. I missed the 1-1 one -one that I should have blocked as well. Alright, Hacker. And then now a Disruption Protocol we can still cast. So the Flyers can attack. Seems like we're going to survive the attack back. But our opponent should have had one fewer human token for what it's worth. Another Adlin was to be expected. We'll just counter it. So no life gain of veteran. And then the flyers should be able to cross the finish line. Is this a convoked knight errand? Can maybe gain two up to five. Still not enough. Alright, GG's. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Turn one, we could go for Disruptor to set up our Thief on turn two. Opponent does have a flyer, but luckily it cannot block. Not really interested in blocking their Phoenix chick either. So I'll go for Disruptor. I've got a few interesting things we can do next turn, including passing and then Hoverbike can crew with a Disruptor to maybe block a Phoenix chick. Our opponent was maybe considering a Monstrous Rage, but didn't go for it. So this turn... Yeah, maybe attack and go for Prosperous Thief is not a bad idea. Because the problem with Hoverbike is if we want to actually tap another haste creature, they'll see it coming. So they're not going to attack into it. Whereas at least with the Thief we're making a bit of progress. That is, assuming they don't have a play with fire. If they do, I get punished. Because I can kill it before damage. So maybe that is an argument for Hoverbike after all. Of course, I can kill Disruptor and prevent me from crewing. We'll see what happens. Alright, opponent goes to attackers, so I don't think we tap down Phoenix Chick. And this will force them to Monstrous Rage, but we'll still trade. Or they can play with fire the hover bike after I crew it. Alright, opponent's got a lightning strike, that's fine. And then they still have the monstrous rage we suspected from last turn. Alright, so that's quite a bit of damage, but our opponent's down to one card in hand, and another hover bike isn't bad. So now we could Prosperous Thief Ninjutsu with a Disruptor or with a Ginger Brute. If I go for Thief of Disruptor, we have two mana, so then I can still hover by tap down Phoenix Chick. And then Thief should be able to connect once again. Yeah, let's try that. I 
think I care more about preventing the damage. Wouldn't be able to crew the hover bike, but it's just uh, good that we prevent a bit of damage here. Alright, Frenzy, that's too bad, so we won't get to keep making treasure. So Ginger Brute, Ninjutsu, the Hacker is not a bad starting point. Versus Ginger Brute, Crew Hoverbike, Attack, Ninjutsu with the Hacker, and then I can still replay the Hoverbike to tap down Phoenix Chick once again. And then we'll have a uh, Ginger Brute and Hacker in play. Kind of like that idea. So we get to draw. And then pass with hover bike available. Swiss spear, that resolves. Still interested in tapping down the Phoenix Chick, which is guaranteed to hit for two. And then now Zoetic so Glyph on the hover bike would turn it into a 5 4 flying which can hold on Phoenix Chick if we'd like. So that's one way to do it. Could also just try and turn this into a race, since uh, we've got quite a bit of damage on the board. Problem is, if we try to glyph Ginger Brute and our opponent did have a removal spell left, we get punished a little bit. Although it feels like if they had a lightning strike, they would have gone face to enable prowess. So... I'm gonna Zvadi Glyph the Ginger Brute, and we'll see what happens if that resolves. And then now, could play another Ginger Brute to Crew Hoverbike, attack for 9, but that does leave us a little bit vulnerable on the way back. So, I think we start by attacking with what we have. And then we can Crew Hoverbike defensively, perhaps. Alright, one Ginger Brute can go. And then probably fine to run out Soaring City so we can uh, play both our creatures. Okay, points at 8. They do have some creatures that can block Ginger Brute since it simply cannot be blocked except by creatures with haste. And then here, can crew hover bike using, I want to say, Ginger Brutes, because this can still be sacrificed to gain three, which is relevant. They might have another Frenzy or some other removal spell. We're about to find out. Go to blockers and just attempt to trade. If our opponent has a lightning strike, then this is 7 damage, so we're not dead yet. And then we have them on the way back. And if these trades happen, I think I'm pretty happy. Also have a foundry we can activate. Our opponent did have a frenzy. Fair enough. So we will get to discover. Maybe hit another glyph. Disruptor instead. Okay. So now we don't quite have lethal. Can animate Mishra's Foundry attack for 6. So in that case, Ginger Brute blocking and gaining 3 is pretty effective. But I'll still get in with the rest. So we have a 2 turn clock. And we might draw into something with a hacker. Alright, Retrofitter is not bad. So that can represent more damage next turn, but for now we can chum block and gain 3. 
which should do it. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Turn one Siren into a hover bike and then hopefully Glyph on three. Now we could also Ninjutsu a Thief. Opponent on black green mid range and a Virtue kills Siren. And that's too bad. So now, yeah, we're kind of light on creatures to enable Ninjutsu. So probably just gonna flash in the hover bike regardless and with a land we can put a glyph on it to have a, a large flyer glissa is kind of a problem since that can destroy our enchantment so maybe i do just fading hope and then try to draw into a land so we could glyph on the map now, of course, our opponent's just going to replay Glissa most likely, which can block it. But we have Fading Hope and then Hover Bike as two interactive spells. So I think we still go for it here. And see, yeah, this doesn't die to most of their removal spells. Doesn't die to go for the throat, cut down, Virtue is not good enough. So now... I'm looking at Fading Hope, and then we can Hover Bike in their turn if they replay Glissa once again. Could also Fading Hope and then Play Eater and Equip to hit for 7. Not really looking to Ninjutsu at the moment. So what's the upside of Hover Biking Glissa in their turn is that we don't need to worry about it in the upcoming turn. Um, but then it is going to be able to attack and then destroy the glyph, potentially. Yeah, I guess that's fine. We'll see what's on top. Maybe that changes our decision. Disruption Protocol. Could have been an answer to Glissa, but it's not quite going to line up. So I don't think I want it anymore. And then, sure, we can eat her, equip, hit for 7. Also, if our opponent does find an answer, maybe like an Edict, to deal with our creature, having a counterspell to discover into is not that exciting. Alright, Glissa appears once again. And there's another Fading Hope. Well, we can keep doing this song and dance. And then Hoverbike can maybe allow for the final attack. Mishra's Foundry... Probably good enough. It's definitely not amazing here. Yeah, I guess we can bottom. Finding a cheap evasive creature would be better, I think. So if our opponent replays Glissa once again, they should be dead. So opponent's got different plans. Maybe they did draw the Edict. Discards to hand size. Alright, so assuming our opponent drew Shoulders Edict, is there anything I can do about it? This is a token, so our opponent can name Sacrifice a token creature, so playing one of my other creatures is not going to help. So yeah, I guess we attack. It's going to be a Boseju instead, makes sense. So it destroys my map. Get to find a basic at least. And we still get to discover. Hitting a hover bike. Maybe should have started with Disruptor, tap down the land so they can't cut down the thief. But, uh, yeah. In that case, our opponent would have just floated black mana, and then they would have still been able to cast a cutdown anyways. And our opponent concedes, so yeah, finding many answers to Glissa worked out nicely. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw. This hand seems a little lackluster, just a one creature, even though it can be enhanced by Eater of Virtue. Feels like we're not applying enough pressure where Fading Hope is going to turn into card disadvantage pretty quickly. Alright, this is a bit more balanced. So, what do we want to keep? Going turn one Eater, turn two Disruption Protocol if necessary. Sounds decent. Fading Hope plays well with Protocol, since we can maybe bounce something that resolved and try to counter it on the way back. But uh, I also want to keep my creatures here if possible. So maybe this Fading Hope that goes... ...up against a Red Aggro with turn 1 Scamp. So do we offer the trade for Ginger Brute? Unlikely to work out if her opponent's got any pump spells. So I'll play the Eater. And then we can set up our hover bike or protocol on turn two. Having the flexibility is nice. Picnic Ruiner, so they are on the red green. Siren's not bad. So I do have the option of playing it and then equipping Eater of Virtue. And then we'll have a 3-1. If it dies, we can still maintain the flying keyword on future creatures, which is pretty nice. Or we can keep up Disruption Protocol, and then next turn we can double spell. Yeah, let's just do that for now. If our opponent's got something like a Godric or a Squee, could be important to counter those. There's a green mana. And an Iconoclast. I'll happily counter, since it would also give Picnic Ruiner a double strike. So now I'm likely going for Play Siren and then keep up Hover Bike. Another protocol, yeah. That plays... Opponent looking to maybe enhance one of their creatures with a pump effect. Sadly don't have a bounce spell to punish those. But a Picnic Ruiner we can just counter here. Probably for the best. And then I'll take the trade for Scamp if they offer. A retrofitter can animate the map token now. Or we can uh, tap down the Ruiner with Hoverbike and then still play Ginger Brute in the meantime. Retrofitter is a bit more kind of tempo positive here. Get to immediately attack for 4. A 2-3 lines up favorably, although we can expect a pump spell. Yeah, it's kind of tricky. If our opponent does have a way to enhance the Ruiner once again, it could hit pretty hard, potentially even present lethal with multiple pump spells, so I might regret uh, not keeping up the hover bike. But I feel like I need to start applying a bit of pressure myself. And then I would rather animate the map so we can still equip Eater of Virtue. Could also see a removal spell, of course. For now, Questing Druid sees Giant Growth times two, but no green mana left. The auto tapper doing a disservice here. But Ancestral Anger still draws, and a Bane Splitter, so it's still gonna have Double Strike here. So that's hitting for 10. But at least next turn, if they go for Giant Growth, we can Hover Bike. And there's another one. So now, could Ginger Brute attack for 7, and then next turn it's Lethal, versus Equipping Eater. Yeah, I guess going for Ginger Brute's fine. And then, uh, yeah, I guess the Giant Growths went away. They can still play Questing Druid, which we can tap down with the second hover bike. Audacity, that's fine. And a hover bike to the rescue here.
Our opponent not even playing the questing druid, but I believe they're dead on board since they would take one down to six, and then with the equipment and by crewing our vehicle we should have been able to get at least six damage in. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of our hand? It's good if our opponent doesn't have a one mana blocker or removal spell for Ginger Brute, because then we get to Ninjutsu Thief, and we're off to the races. So let's hope for the best. Being on the play certainly helps. On the draw, this plan is much less likely to work out. Turn one swamp. Alright, let's hope there's no cut down, basically. Doesn't seem to be the case. And then I could replay Ginger Brute. Could keep up Fading Hope using the treasure. Although I kind of still need an artifact in play for the Retrofitter to be great. So I guess it's fine to just play Ginger Brute, although I guess since we're using a treasure, there's no real upside since it has haste anyway. So may as well pass. Two mana, could see removal on Thief. Would much rather see a blocker we can bounce. If they try and take out Thief, I could Fading Hope it. Now I'm liking Retrofitter on the treasure. Alternative is Ginger Brute, Eater Virtue, and then Equip, or just double Ginger Brute, keep up Fading Hope. Yeah, I'm not counting on Thief connecting and giving me another treasure in this instance. So I guess I don't want Retrofitter getting killed either. So in that case, maybe Ginger Brute... And Eat or Virtue is the way to go. And if they take out Ginger Brood, at least Eater might give future creatures haste. Unless they kill it in response here. This might be... And go for the Throat on Thief. A bitter triumph on Ginger Brute instead. That's fine. So we'll exile the Ginger Brutes. Still get to connect with Thief, make a treasure. And pass it back. So next turn we're maybe looking at Retrofitter Animate Treasure, and then I can still equip Thief or something else. I guess Retrofitter Equip with Eater to give it haste is also a valid line. And now a Flash Gorger. Alright, we're likely going to bounce that, but uh, can take our turn first. Land isn't bad. So Fading Hope, Flash Gorger, Retrofitter, Equip, I think is what I'm going for. Opponent may be realizing their mistake and uh, should have cast a removal spell in response to the equipment. Protocol is not going to be able to counter Flash Gorger. Although we can sort of attack past it with Ginger Brute. So it's not a bad card to have in this type of matchup, I assume. And then I'll tap manually here. And attack for 11. I guess their opponent's just dead here. Kind of lost track of their life total. They also lost 3 to their own Bitter Triumph. Which also made a difference here. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Turn one, maybe go for Siren, and then turn two we can already keep up Disruption Protocol against an aggressive red deck with turn one Epicure. Okay, now I'm kind of liking Siren, and then turn two Ninjutsu Thief. Make a treasure, can maybe replay Siren, we'll see. So I'm not going to take the trade if they offer. Plus they could also have a Monstrous Rage in hand. So it does appear to be Mono Red Aggro as opposed to Red White Tokens. Take three, so we're definitely on the back foot here. But at least this Thief is going to connect, give us a treasure. And then... I guess replaying Siren is fine here, so we can maybe trade for Epicure. Could also keep it and then next turn play Akalpakal and Siren to immediately trigger it. 
Maybe that's better, actually. Can I imagine our opponent has an answer to the thief? So the treasure is not necessarily gonna be generated to enable a call. We can also take a more controlling approach where we keep up protocol, but protocol is gonna be more effective if we're already ahead on board, as opposed to trying to play catch up. Charming scoundrel. I would be surprised if our opponent played defense with our creatures. Could be a one mana frenzy coming up. Nope, opponent attacks, hits us for four. And we get to untap. Now we've got disruption protocol available. But a step one attack with thief. And then probably gonna play my one five. This blocks pretty well, and then we can protect it with protocol by tapping the map and sacking two treasures. Okay, and then now we get to generate some card advantage, which always feels nice. We've got a bunch more artifacts lined up to trigger this. And a Fading Hope is probably what we need here, have some interaction for things in play, even though Ginger Brute can also gain some life back. So now we could cast Fading Hope if needed. Blocking Felden with a 1-5 is not ideal since they will get to exile one card. Our opponent deciding to make a treasure last turn could imply that they're stuck on two lands wanting to cast an impactful 3-drop, which would play right into our protocol. There's going to be a Swiss Spear, that's fine. And an all-out attack, so we can block Charming Scoundrel. This looks to be Frenzy for one mana, sacking the treasure, so we'll counter that. This enables Prowess, still probably block Scoundrel. But our opponent does get quite a bit of damage in. So we're at 7. But it looks like Thief is going to connect once again. Opponent contemplating whether they should sack Blood Token to maybe hit a mountain. They don't. So, just attack with Thief, I'll leave a call back. Do we want to equip Eater Virtue here? I think we do. Could equip it both on the Thief and then back on defense on a call if we'd like. Speed up our clock a little bit. And then I could also play Spyglass Siren if I'd like. Although we might find another disruption protocol. I think I'm fine as is. So we've got Fading Hope available. But I guess another Witch Stalker Frenzy could be effective now. Could be a reason to Fading Hope their creature before it gets a chance to attack, so at least it will cost a little bit more mana to cast a Frenzy. Putting moves to attackers. Yeah, I'm tempted to bounce Felden if that's the case. Even though it doesn't block our Thief on the way back. Just want to do some damage control. And a Foundry, not exactly what I need. It's still a decent blocker, I suppose, but... Can always uh, sacrifice Ginger Brute to gain life. If we can find another counter spell or bounce spell, that's probably better. Hover Bike would also be pretty great, since it can maybe enable Akal Pakal during the opponent's turn as well. So we could still see Attack and Frenzy, but we don't. And a Kumano. Okay, we're at six. And Hacker the draw. So opponent at least won't have a way to enable Swiss Spear's prowess while I attack. So this is good to attack. And then I 
I think we also get in with Akal Pakal. Don't think I'm gonna ninjutsu the hacker. But Ginger Brute to gain life seems nice here. Could see a double block on Thief. Although I kind of doubt it. Also could have considered exploring with a map token. Maybe if we hit a non-land card, this goes up to three toughness. But uh damage happens. So Ginger Brute wanna keep up at least two mana. And then let's see if we can play Siren. Move Eater onto the Siren so that if they kill it we grant flying to our creatures. And then that might be it for now. Could also explore maybe once. Sure. If I play Hacker, I may be overextending into something like an End the Festivities dealing one to everything. So that's also part of why I want to maybe give this an extra plus one counter. All right, and a Glyph is perfect to keep on top. So I'll draw the Glyph. And then with three more life from Ginger Brute, I'm feeling pretty confident. Opponent does have a Lightning Strike. So we can just give flying to the Thief now. And that should be game. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So the one-off Eater of Virtue showing that it can be quite valuable in a deck with a few flying creatures, a few haste creatures, and uh, also just a one-man artifact to set up your turn to disruption protocol. So yeah, this deck is kind of unusual, not something you'll have seen before. Maybe you've seen some decks with Zoetic Glyph, like the blue-green artifact deck, but uh, Mono Blue is definitely something I haven't seen much of before. So I'm pretty happy with how the deck turned out. There's a few flex slots in the deck, as you can tell here. The Retrofitter could play a couple more copies or fewer. I've been pretty happy with the one of Akal Pakal, could maybe even go up to two copies, just because it plays so well with the hover bike. And then uh, not totally convinced by the Moon Circuit Hacker in this deck. Uh, much happier with the Prosperous Thief, since the artifacts actually synergize with the deck. Hacker, of course, is still good with these one-mana evasive creatures, but usually only gets to connect once, and then it kind of sits there waiting for maybe a trade or a, a board wipe, pretty much. So, yeah, Hacker could potentially be replaced, but it still kind of fits in the theme of the deck, and can also synergize with Prosperous Thief if it's already in play can maybe connect and make a treasure token. So yeah, there's a few ways to go about it, but I think most of the other cards in this deck are kind of set in stone, and I wouldn't mess too much with those. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!